Hey guys, welcome to the secret history living in your aquarium. Why am I wearing these goofy leaves on my head? Well, it's because I really like these goofy leaves. These are guava leaves from the guava fruit tree, which is native to South America. Now, there's other versions in Africa, in India, as well as all over the world now that humans have spread them because they're awesome. And all throughout the world, wherever these trees go, people ascribe magical powers of healing to them. And we've had them as an additive available to us in the aquarium hobby for quite some time now. And I wanted to evaluate whether it's all hype or whether they're just dried leaves. Uh, you know, there's already almond leaves, alder leaves, mulberry leaves, moringa leaves, jackfruit, which we talked about in the first video in this series. And so we've covered jackfruit being really actually one of those kind of wondrous plants that has a lot of really cool properties. But does this one have so many properties? Okay, I can't I can't hide it. Yes, it has some really, really cool properties, and a lot of plants do. But this one is actually an outlier. It has far more than your average plant would if you were to just throw a stone and hit a tree. So let's talk about some of the science that's been done by looking at some really cool studies done out of Mexico where they looked at folklore around the world and they wanted to see what humans said it was good for. So what tribal groups said these leaves were good for. What they used them for tea or for packing wounds or for making ointments and things out of the leaves or the fruit or the tree itself or the bark. And then they did a scientific double blind study and saw if it was uh, scientifically and statistically significant. And it turns out that there are 10 things that I found in this study, as well as, you know, a number of other studies. There's plenty of wonder food articles and superfood articles talking about the tea and the leaves, but I don't put much stock into those. I read the science. And so I went through and looked at the science and looking at the folklore with humans led to us looking at what this would do in humans. Well, before we put it into human trials, they needed to study it in something else. So oftentimes they use fruit flies and uh, danios and other little fish. And then they would move on to something like a frog or a mouse. And then they would move on to a pig or a monkey and, you know, finally chimpanzees and humans. And so lucky for us, we get to go along for the ride and see what's true about this plant. Now, if you're interested in buying this plant, I'll just cut to the chase. You can get a discount. And right now that discount happens to be at aquaticarts.com. Uh, they have free shipping on all their dry goods right now, which is great. I have a little deal with them. I let people know where I get my stuff and I get a little cutback and then I can do episodes on, on things by getting free stuff from them. So I got these leaves for free. I must say I got uh, 15 leaves for free. So uh, thanks Aquatic Arts and also the information will be linked below and if the code changes, which it does every six months or so, there'll always be the Aquatic Arts code in my newest videos. It's always within the first paragraph or so of the description. But right now, it's all caps, HISTORY SECRET 15. No spaces or anything, all caps. And that will get you 15% off your order. And oftentimes, I'll do drawings for people um, who are using the code and will do extra giveaways of gift cards and things. If you've already used that code in the last uh, few months, then you can use History Secret 10 and still get 10% off on top of that, the free shipping and uh, the drawings and things. So think about it. If you're interested in trying these leaves, uh, free shipping can't beat that and they're a great price. Uh, I mean, unless you're buying giant, giant, you know, 40 pound bags of them. Uh, they have really good prices on all their botanicals and they're all pesticide free, grown on organic farms or uh, out in the wild where there is no pesticides or um, fertilizer used. And so they're all ready to go in your tank when you get them. You don't have to boil them or anything. You can if you want, but in any case. So let's go look at some of my tanks and see how the leaves hold up over time. And as we do that, we'll talk about some of the amazing effects that these plants have 
including, I mean, and not limited to, but type 2 diabetes, being able to stabilize it, stabilizing your blood sugar and also being able to uh, heal wounds quicker and produce more collagen and elasticity in the skin of humans as well as fish, uh, regulating br blood pressure, uh, high in potassium, vitamin C, antioxidants, and of course it's good for slime coat, it's good for building biofilms for shrimp and snails and invertebrates to eat, as well as nanofish and baby fry that eat all the little microflora and fauna that live on these leaves. So let's go look at my tanks, we'll finish talking about it, and we'll talk about some of the folklore, some of the history, and some of the things you can do with this awesome plant, and uh, I'll talk to you guys inside. Ah, much better. Now we're inside where it's nice and warm, and I can tell you guys about these awesome leaves. The guava fruit leaf, or the guava tree leaf. Uh, now, I'm not saying this is the one leaf to rule them all, but I am saying it is one of several that can help you have a very well-balanced and, and lovely ecosystem. So, before we get back to this topic of the medicinal effects, and, and I can't speak to any of the effects on humans, uh, I'm not a doctor, obviously, and even if I were, I can't, you know, give information to, uh, or advice to patients through the, uh, through the videos, through the internets, so I'm giving you guys advice on your fish instead. So all those studies that were done on the humans started on fish or other simple creatures and then progressed through fish. And we'll get to that and to their folklore and what it said in the mythology, but first I want to point out that obviously they just look nice so here we have one that i added uh, earlier today about 12 hours ago a leaf uh, these ones happen to sink right away pretty well unlike some of the bigger almond leaves and things part of that's just surface area and uh so one of the other ones i have has been in here uh for about a month and it's cracked a little bit and just kind of sitting on the bottom there. Back there we have a Catapa almond leaf and then uh, we have cinnamon leaf also uh, broken up around here and uh, one more guava leaf elsewhere. Now one cool thing about this, uh, if you don't want a black water tank, and it, that is uh, a tank that looks like it's tea stain, is that this leaf actually only gives off three specific tannins uh, in large numbers. And they're actually kind of unique tannins, and they have medicinal properties that have been established in science uh, in double-blind studies. So they won't turn your whole tank yellow, but they do drop the pH a little bit. So adding three or four leaves to a 20 gallon, not going to be a problem, not going to even change your watercolor much. Uh, but in a five gallon or something, it could change your water pH enough that it could uh, distress your fish. So always do it gradually uh, if you're not sure uh, you know, what your fish's happiness uh, and tolerance range is with pH. Because obviously that's one of the biggest reasons people buy these leaves is for that. So the other great thing is you can see right away that the pleco, uh, the ancestress, is chewing on it and it's actually eating the leaf, but it's probably eating either algae or biofilm that's starting to form on it. It's only been in there 12 hours and already I've seen the garamis and the plecos and the shrimp all munching on it, walking on it, and so forth. Um, and in that, what they're doing is any of the benefits that we speak on that the leaf has will go into the slime coat or the aufux, the the uh, outer coating of that leaf. As you see, like in this lotus pod that's been in here eight or nine months, it's got algae and slimy this and that, and it's starting to fall apart. Well, all of those beneficial properties are then in that. So any fish that eats that algae or shrimp that eats that algae or biofilm on there is getting trace amounts of the beneficial um, nutrients. Sp specifically, any of the metals or uh, nutrients, they're definitely getting the minerals and things. But even some of this other compounds, like some of the ones that help with wound healing and so forth, are passed on. But the most, uh, the most unique compounds, you can see that, that fish is actually rubbing on the leaf. And uh, these fish are totally fine and healthy, these garamis, they've been doing great. But 
I've noticed that fish have rubbed on these leaves when I watch them for a long time and they're getting see there's a different different fish doing it all together and they're doing it uh, I think to help their slime coat because it's well known that tannins also help slime coats and things but beyond that these leaves are full of carotenoids anthocyanins lycopene and all sorts of the other carotenoids that give fish they're really bright blue, red, or purple colors. And then the athataskin and things that gives the yellow and the orange and fiery colors that you see also in there. Now guanine and guarine are also in there, which they're in a lot of biological things. That's nothing that special, but it happens to also be in there. And that's what gives the shiny coat of, on fish, their iridescent shimmer that you see in so many fish that's what gives them that is the guarine and guanine crystals in their iridophores rather than the their pigment pigmentophore sites um or or color based sites so you get the benefit of more shiny fish and more healthy fish because on fish their immune system is directly linked to that exterior um slime coat it's like their skin almost uh, and then they've got their scales and then they've got their flesh underneath that well another property when they were studying this was collagen enhancing enzymes so uh, there were properties that increased the production of collagen at a cellular level and that was found in all the animal studies and the human studies and that collagen helps for scales that stay on a fish stronger uh, and allow them to flex better. And also, it allows for shrimp, when they're molting, to have a little bit of bounce or flexibility in their uh, shell. Now, their shell's made out of calcium and carbon and chitin, specifically, uh, which is then woven almost like a bulletproof vest. It's a very cool, natural uh, thing that happens, and we've studied it uh, in engineering labs to try to, you know, mimic it and, and get some of the same strength properties. So I have a whole video on how those layers work in shrimp, but needless to say, the white ring of death that happens in shrimp is much less likely to occur when you have uh, a healthy collagen, as well as the calcium and other things, uh, that are needed for a healthy, um, uh, gut biome and uh, autoimmune system or immune system on these shrimp. So it has all those properties and that's why I make sure to put this as well as the jackfruit or a catapa in combination in my in all my shrimp tanks and make sure that they're in there. So the other thing that's great is that I think they look nice in a, a biotope type tank. This is kind of like an African uh, kind of flooded forest or or uh, riverbank tank here and I've got lots of uh, fry from different types of little somfong rasboras and uh, African amber barbs and, and Papua New Guinea uh, um, half beaks and all the way down to uh, we've also got scarlet battis and other things in here but this makes an excellent home for any sort of food, uh, any sort of little critters that uh, single cell critters or multicellular micro crustaceans, all the stuff uh, that paramecium or infusoria is, uh, all the different species love to hang out amongst this. So if you were to zoom in with your phone uh, or more specifically a microscope, there's a good chance you'll see little teeny critters, uh, especially in a shrimp tank where the fish don't eat them right away, working around uh, helping to break this down, uh, eating up all those good nutrients and the awesome properties that are in the leaves, but then also they are food for the babies when they hatch. Now in that same study which was done in uh, Mexico and really cool study uh, that was done on several species of the guava fruit tree. Uh, it, it was done at the uh, Institute of Phytochemistry and Pharmacology by Rosa Martha Perez Gutierrez and it's uh, published in the uh, Ethnopharmacology Journal 2nd uh, edition 8th article 
Uh, and in that, they find that it is actually um, an antibacterial and a probiotic. So they found, they did a survey of gut flora and fauna in fish, mice, monkeys, and humans. And in all of them, they found the same average number of uh, bacteria afterwards, species-wise. So if there were 1,200 beforehand, there were still that many afterwards. And uh, yet, any sort of harmful pathogens that they tried to put in, so um, things like E. coli, uh, e. coli and, and uh, various types of dysentery, uh, in the case of the, of the uh, fish, they were able to see in the zebra daniels that they did not actually it did not grow it prevented the growth of those yet it did not kill the existing bacteria so they're really studying that this was in 2008 and it was seen as kind of a magical um in central america as a magical cure for all stomach problems and so scientists and doctors are really looking at this now and and trying to figure out well what what about it makes it so that it it basically prevents the bad and doesn't kill the good i mean that's pretty cool because a lot of traditional antibiotics wipe out the the good with the bad uh so that's very neat now one of the other claims in the study was about uh skin it, it said that it would keep you young if you have if you take tea from this this plant and that's both in Central America and in Africa that they believe that and it turns out that there is the the elastic and collagen uh, promoting uh, compounds in this that actually do really help with wound care and uh, if you have acne scars and things like that they found that there could be some help with that I'm going to try to avoid speaking to the uh, human issues, as I was saying, but yet again, when you see fish, you know, rubbing on something and whatnot, uh, it is, you know, they're adding to that immune system that is made up of their slime coat. If you've ever had a fish jump out of the tank, roll over on the floor, get fuzzy or whatever from lint and stuff, oftentimes they won't make it. So if you have a fish with an injury or ick or whatnot, you can treat them with either salt or the temperature or a medication. But be sure to put in some leaves with tannins. The tannins will really increase the slime coat and it has antibacterial, antifungal properties, like I was saying, as well as healing properties for the skin and wounds. Now, also beyond that, the biggest thing that they're studying this for, and giant pharmaceutical companies are studying this for, is the fact that in primates, mice, basically all mammals, it, it seems to help reduce uh, diabe second, uh, type 2 diabetes and its effects. So what it does is it regulates uh, glucose and insulin, and they found that it allows fish, and see now snails eating it, so all sorts of critters are excited about this new leaf and all its properties. As the leaf ages, you'll get one coat of, of just slimy stuff that's bacteria and tannins leaching from it, where all the nutrients are coming out. Then it'll kind of become skeletized. So let me take you over to an actual black water biotope tank. Uh, I just did a water change, so the water isn't super yellow, but you can see here we've got lots of old leaves, and the pH here is 6.0. So uh, this one actually has low pH in here, and you can see all the little shrimp, the Malawa shrimp, eating that stuff, and then they are full of those nutrients and that collagen uh, being built. And then little fish like this here, goby, or... Uh, any number of the fish, like my bettas here, my wild bettas, betta macrostoma, uh, are able to then predate on them and get those benefits, especially from the little babies and things. Um, these leaves and this leaf litter really has allowed me to have more fish and more fry, uh, more shrimplets too, than anything else that I can think of that I've done in the tank. You can just tear up a whole bunch of leaves and because of that antifungal, antibacterial property that they have, they also aren't going to rot or mold and get white like you see oftentimes. Um, so far, all the cori eggs that I've found that have been laid on the bed of of leaves, including this one which is nine months old and there's still the skeleton of the, the vein part of the leaf, uh, they they don't mold. 
So pretty interesting. Um, also, the lowered acidity will help that. So anything that's more acidic will help that. Uh, and by low acidity, I mean lower pH, uh, higher acidity technically. Uh, you'll find that it actually uh, helps all of those things. So I think this is quite the, the wonder plant, honestly, um, from the biome to the blood regulation of sugars and that can mean that your fish can then eat less often and that their their blood glucose levels will stay stable also they found that in in uh, humans and fish alike it lowered cholesterol uh 20 percent and then raised the good cholesterol type the ldl uh 10 percent so pretty neat uh that it can also have that potential um, beyond all that the wound healing and uh, the helping of the uh, exoskeleton the for the shrimp when they're shedding uh, the baby shrimp go through a lot of exoskeleton so having a food source that's on here whether you buy um, something like Bacter AE which actually aquatic arts also carries this brand uh, and I like this brand if you're going to buy something like an additive. This is basically enzymes that encourage uh, the growth of those uh, biofilms in your tank that your fish and shrimp love so much. So, uh, again, Aquatic Arts, all dry stuff. If you make an order of just their dry uh, food or botanicals and things, get some jackfruit leaves, some catapa leaves, some Bacter AE some of their wafers or pellets or whatnot you can get my discount code it may have changed by the time you see this but just check out my newer video and in my newest video uh i'll have the up-to-date code but right now the code is history secret 15 and history secret 10 uh, to get you 15% off your first order uh, with that code and if you need another order uh, you get 10% off plus added to raffles and giveaways that I do on the channel sometimes and uh, you know it's also a really cool organization in that they support tanks for kids and if you adopt a pet they give you a $50 gift certificate even just from any animal shelter you just show them that you adopted a stray uh, so they do a lot of really cool stuff, a lot of preservation of fish and habitats, and that's why I work with them. Okay, so back to finishing off this leaf. So the tannins that it has in particular are Terra Canton, uh, Punna Kalin, and Punna Caligin. And I probably butchered that, but those three uh, tannins out of about 700 different tannins that have been identified happen to be very high in these leaves, and they think that that's what lowers the blood pressure, lowers the cholesterol, and also they found uh, it reduces heart attack, and uh, it, it has uh, other really good effects on wounds healing much faster, as well as uh, organ failure happening less often. So, I think this is just a rad plant altogether. Beyond that, one more thing that it happens to do is it illuminates uh, luminous bacteria, which are known to kill a lot of the uh, ne Neocaridina shrimp and Caridina shrimp that are so popular in our hobby. And so, things like Illobiopsidae and, and so forth are much less likely to grow or take hold with these uh, properties there. Now that being said, you still need to order from a good source. If you've got a big infestation of anything, it's going to be a problem. But these are always uh, pesticide-free uh, chemical fertilizer. They're not sprayed on with that, and they're from their natural range and food-grade leaves when you get them through aquatic arts. So uh, check them out. I hope you guys like these deep dives. If you do, let me know what you think of these leaves, what you've done with these leaves. And uh, in the comments, let me know if there's anything else <laughs> I could have covered that you would have liked to know. Uh, overall, a very neat plant with a cool history, uh, both in indigenous people, in the aquarium hobby, and now in pharmacology and medicine. I will talk to you guys later. It's been Alex Williamson with The Secret History Living in Your Aquarium, and I hope you guys have an awesome time. Hit that like button and or share this to any friends that you find it uh, would enjoy it. And if you made it this long and you're not subscribed, please think of doing so. I'd appreciate it gladly. 
And uh, if you want to support me even more, keep the education free and going around the internet. Uh, you can also support the channel by joining the membership, starting at only a buck ninety nine a month. And I post all the sources and extra materials uh, and anything interesting that I come along while researching these topics. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Have a good one. Bye.